Well, we have been waiting to find out who ultimately will control Congress and the U.S. Senate. One of the things that's flown more under the radar is that Democrats are having a phenomenally good election at the state level, in state legislatures around the country. In Pennsylvania, Democrats think they have done it there. They think they have gained control of the House in Pennsylvania for the first time in more than a decade. If that holds up, Pennsylvania Democrats will have much more leverage when it comes to enacting the policy agenda of the incoming Democratic governor there, Josh Shapiro. In Michigan, it's more stark than that. This was the first election in Michigan since the districts there were drawn up by a bipartisan citizens commission instead of just in a partisan scrum. Look what happened. Michigan Democrats flipped the state house and they flipped the state Senate for the first time in 40 years. And because Michigan Democrats also kept the governorship when Gretchen Whitmer was reelected, that means they're gonna have a governing trifecta. Democrats will be in charge in Michigan uh, for a change. They'll have all major statewide offices and the state legislature, both houses. Also in Minnesota, Democrats in Minnesota kept their majority in the state house and they flipped the state Senate away from the Republicans because in Minnesota, they've also kept the governorship. Democrats will now be in charge in Minnesota as well, fully in charge of the state government. When I say Democrats at the state level have been having a really good election, I don't just mean where they have been on offense, like in those states I just described. Also, it's true on for, for them where, in places where they were playing defense, frankly. Check out what happened in Wisconsin, uh, where Republican lawmakers have been kept in check just barely. Um, this time around, Wisconsin Republicans set their sights on trying to get a veto-proof supermajority in the state legislature, which, is, which would essentially render the Democrats governor there irrelevant. They did not get their supermajority in Wisconsin, despite the fact that that state is gerrymandered beyond the point of living democracy. They fell short by two seats, thanks to excellent defense played by the Democrats in Wisconsin. It was even closer in North Carolina. Republican lawmakers there thought they would also get a veto-proof supermajority, which again would render the Democratic governor there effectively irrelevant. North Carolina Republicans did get that in the state Senate, but they were stopped in the state house. Republicans fell short in the state house by one vote. By the slimmest of margins, North Carolina Democrats were able to hold the line there. That is why when, when you say we say you got to watch every race, we really do mean every single race. I, I want to talk about Michigan for a second, just because last night the first thing that happened, and I think this, I think Florida's early count East Coast thing has this weird effect on election night perception. Like a drug. It, it comes back so early, it you know we get the results early, and and it's been trending Republican. Last night, if there was a Florida of the Democrats, it was Michigan. 100%. And if there's a governor like Ron DeSantis for Democrats in terms of political acumen, mm -hmm. Gretchen Whitmer. Yep. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of things that went into that happening there. It's not just Whitmer. This is a, this is a tight state. This is a, a, a swing state. Whitmer wins by 10, 11 points, looks like. They sweep the statewide offices. They win both houses. And this is a governor in Gretchen Whitmer who was targeted by the right from day one. She had Donald Trump looking at her. She had, an, she had a plot busted by the <laughs> FBI to literally kidnap her. They had armed people showing up at the state house. And at they, her and at her, yeah. at her house yeah. when they yeah. were and she stuck to her guns. She never lost sight of where the electorate was. She has governed in a progressive fashion, but has also been a broadly appealing figure, despite how much they have tried to polarize her. Yeah. And I just think the performance of Michigan Democrats and Whitmer in particular last night securing that trifecta was one of the most impressive. Thank you for night. saying that. I, I mean, I, I we, we said this in our little call today on the on the uh, for, for the show that I agree with you. I think that. She has been eclipsed. People want to talk about DeSantis, but I consider her to be the big winner last night. She now should be in the presidential conversation if Biden doesn't run. Yeah. You know, with Big Gretch, as they call her uh, down there, she even had a, like a, a rap ad at the end that was like really pretty good. I don't know why Ari Melber isn't here to talk about it with me. <laughs> but I mean, she, she, she's emerged as a really popular governor, you know, as a, as a woman, as somebody who I think should be a national figure, who should be much more in the conversation that we're generally tending to have about. Simone, I saw you nodding there. Obviously, somebody who 
who's very recently been playing a role in national politics, national Democratic messaging on these things. What's the view of Democrats running the table in a state like Michigan? What's the view of the importance, not just of the policy stuff that can happen with those legislative controls, but what that means in terms of politics? Look, I think it's the investment is key here, and you cannot underestimate the effect of Roe. Gretchen Whitmer did a number of events. She had these T-shirts that said Roe Vember. She did a debate wearing a Roe Vember T-shirt. Mm -hmm. She was a governor that ran on the issue of abortion. The Democratic Governors Association will tell you that they spent upwards of more than $20 million uh, on abortion this cycle, which made a difference. I also think we got to get some credit to the Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee. Yes. They usually get no money, and they yeah. didn't get any of this That's cycle right. from the That's DNC. Right. Even though Jamie Harrison gave money elsewhere, they didn't get any from the DNC, but they raised their own funds. They were facing headwinds in Colorado, uh, Maine, Vermont, like you name it, and they held the line. And that is a testament to organizing and to a laser focus from Jessica Post and her team on the state house. We should also say, just on that point, in Michigan specifically, there was a ballot measure yeah. on abortion, yeah, yes. which won in a, which was to enshrine abortion rights in the state constitution. While Democrats ran the table in Michigan, that abortion measure also won in a landslide, yeah. like it won yeah. by 14 points in Michigan.